Welcome to this episode of Inside Friendship. I'm your host, Vicki Salas. In every show, we introduce to you the people and programs that make Friendship ISD a special place. Students experience a lot of different subjects throughout their time at Friendship High. Algebra teacher Bridie Bybee works hard to provide his students with the knowledge they will need, plus to make his classroom a pleasurable experience. My name is Brady Bybee. Yes. Depending on their grade level, juniors would take it to prepare to take college algebra with Ms. Giles next year. Seniors would take it because they don't feel like they're strong enough in math to take college algebra as a senior and to prepare them for taking it at the college level. Honestly, I just love teaching math in general. I enjoy pre-college algebra specifically because getting to work with seniors who are going to go off and go to college next year and kind of preparing them for that, for that is, I think, is kind of fun. I just try to get on their level and try to backtrack where some of the missing pieces might be, whether that be something that they may not have understood from all the way back in Algebra 1 or that's something that they didn't understand last year in Algebra 2 trying to kind of fill in those gaps of where they may have missed something, or even if it was something that they may have misunderstood with, oh, with my class is kind of breaking it down into smaller steps and kind of making it more simplistic if need be. It requires a lot of the same principles and topics that Algebra 2 does, but branches off and goes a lot deeper into majority of those topics than just regular Algebra 2 does at the high school level. It introduces new topics that if you were a math major you were, or like a STEM major, you would use in upper level classes. I really, at one, at some point, want to to teach college algebra, like full college algebra, and so I felt like this was a great opportunity to prepare myself for that as well. Possibly, I think maybe sometimes the seniors realize that either they should have taken college algebra because they were strong enough and they could have done it. Because a lot of my my work is also the same as what as what Ms. Giles is doing in college algebra, dual credit, or they realize that they kind of might need a little bit more help, kind of helps them realize that. For juniors, I guess really the same thing. My favorite thing to teach throughout the year is what we're currently on actually is the systems of equations. It's like puzzles and I enjoy working through puzzles. With the students in general, I really enjoy the first semester kind of figuring out where the strengths and the challenges lie in each individual student and being able to help them. I really enjoy being able to figure that out in the first semester. A group of Friendship High students are developing entrepreneurial skills while at the same time providing teachers a much needed break. Beanie Business kind of started as an idea of having our kids get out and um, interact with uh, the rest of the staff at the high school because we do sometimes get a little bit kind of uh, quarantined, if you will, um, kind of sometimes a little isolated. And so it was just about getting them out and about and letting them be uh, a part of the bigger picture that is Friendship High School. Ms. Tipton approached me and said that they would uh, love to to help us in any way that they could and we kind of visited and, and it turned into more than just helping us with the business. Uh, Ms. Tipton was gracious enough to allow us to come into her lab 
several times a month and she worked on some cooking lessons where her kids worked with my kids. Um, I, again, in that, that setting is just, it's so much more meaningful um, to my kids to be able to work with their peers than to listen to me talk about how to make a breakfast burrito or you know how to um, make sure that the dough is rolled out to a certain uh, thickness so that it doesn't it will it will cook it just means so much more coming from them and so um, you know thankfully um, we've been able to go into her lab uh, probably two or three times a month uh, since the beginning of the year um, and work on not only just sweet treats for the beating business but also count money we do order forms we uh, work on being able to fulfill orders um, basically whatever the students can kind of um, kind of catch on to, we let them participate in that area to the best of their ability. You love books? I love books. But the Friendship High Library and Don Smith helps hundreds of students acquire a passion for reading. Uh, the job I do as a librarian, uh, lots of different things. Um, I help the students find books. I um, read lots of reviews and um, buy books for the library. I also um, help kids with uh, their uh, with any research problems that they might have if they're doing some research um, I do that as well then um, I also help them with their laptops uh, if they have some issues that I can resolve without having to send it to IT I do that as well I set up new laptops for the new kids um, also I like to help the teachers with research I'll do um, a lot of the research before hand so that I know that students will be able to find stuff when Whenever they actually go on and start re researching and they can find uh, stuff, uh, they can find information that is valid and um, that you can depend on for a good research paper. So we have all kinds of books. We have young adult fiction and um, we have a lot of nonfiction. So if you want to learn about something, you can go to the nonfiction section. We have, which has the older classic literature in it as well. We have graphic novels in here and we have some manga in here. So all kinds of story, uh, stories, all kinds of books that you can learn from. So yeah, a wide array. The best part of being a librarian is getting to work with the kids and um, interacting with them, helping them, um, talking about books with them, and then if they need help with research or um, laptops these days, then I get to interact with them that way as well. But really, talking books with them is a lot of fun. So, And getting to know all the kids, I like that. Um, most librarians have their masters um, in uh, learning resources, so uh, that's the qualification in uh, some districts. Some districts will, this is school library, um, some districts you do not have to have your masters and it kind of varies all over the place. If you do have your masters it's kind of good because you can uh, work at the college level, you can look at, work in a public library, it just kind of opens it up to where you can have a, uh, more options as to where you want to work. I'm pretty easy to find, you just come to the library, but you can always email me um, and through Outlook you just have to put my name in there and um, they can always email me as well. So, But the best way for people to get to me is usually just come to the library. Seek perfection, capture excellence. Bring it. Guys, later. Mom wants us home. Okay. Bye, guys. 
You guys need a ride? Sure. Oh, yeah. All right, how about some one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, I gotta go eat, man. Sorry, I'll, I'll see you later. You can achieve a lot using your imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision. Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Invent. Got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. Because of you, I felt hopeless. I know it was a joke but it still hurt me. Because of you, I feel wanted and not alone in this world. Because you said hi to me on the first day of school, I felt included and I knew that I was gonna be okay. If you asked Tiger baseball player Colden Kaiser what he loves about being a Tiger, he would say it was the opportunity it gave him to become a Bobcat. At first it was pretty, pretty slow. I think they were like probably the first person to like genuinely try and make a connection with me. So, I mean, I was really dead set on them from the start, from when I first got like my first offer from a couple small schools. And I really enjoyed the hospitality of the coaches, how they treated me during, even during COVID because I couldn't do anything. Couldn't go over there, see them, nothing. So went down to San Marcos and they just opened it up. And I mean, that was, that really is what got me the, how they, how much they showed that they wanted me. Their energy is just out of out of orbit. Like they just they show a lot of love. They know how to get down to business, and I can see that from phone calls and texts. And they just they know when to be serious and the right time to when to be a good coach and a kind of father figure and all that. So I just I really they just they were awesome when I got to talk to them every all the time. Uh, the coaches, they've, they've really, they've helped me really good with the mental game and how to fight my own thoughts when I'm up to bat and to keep me from thinking too much. And they've, they've been really good with that. And they also, they're really good with uh, teaching most of them, everyone how to hit and all that. And they've really helped me excel my game in the mental, mental aspect more than just going out there and just practicing. They've taught me a lot on the mental side of baseball really like a lot more than really any of my other coaches in summer ball have so if it was really anything it was they've, they've really taught mental game more than i've ever experienced in baseball <laughs> teenagers love to eat it is truly something they can rally together for So often we refresh our dining concepts throughout the schools here at Friendship ISD. And this year we've had the grand opening. We've refreshed Friendship High School and turned it into what we call the Rally Cafe, the Tiger Rally Cafe. And uh, new menu options, uh, more variety, fresh salads, some barbecue brisket, uh, and varieties of other foods, and, and along with the favorites. But today we're celebrating the grand opening of the TRC, the Tiger Rally Cafe. First of all, we were freshening up the environment um, with the core um, new equipment. We've been, uh, implemented an electric smoker so we can do barbecue um, on a try two or three times a, a, a week if we would like to. Uh, we also have some other menu options there and we're refreshing our uh, variety in, in what we're serving. 
We still comply with the Texas Department of Ag and the United States Department of Agriculture's regulatory guidelines. Um, when we do that, we're implementing a dining program that's, as we in, incorporate more fresh ingredients, uh, those ingredients are used to provide a more fresher and more popular style of uh, entree. And we also try new things, something that students, uh, we run promotions and uh, features every so often with the students think, hey, I'd like to try something that's a little more than the normal of West Texas, something a little more uh, Southwest um, or Oriental or a variety of different other types of cuisine. takes is a lot of uh, production and planning, uh, and curing the right product. Uh, the team here at Aramark, we have a wonderful team that puts together uh, options, menu options. We have a test kitchen with a chef and a dietitian uh, that does some research. And we also survey students across the United States to see exactly what they would like in their dining experience. The reason why I'm involved and uh, being the Friendship Tiger here uh, and working as the general manager at this location is because one, uh, we've got lots of great students here. And some students are they, they're what we call nutritionally challenged, that they don't have opportunity a lot of times to get three square meals a day. And so the team here, we focus on trying to ensure that when students are here and their dining experience is here, uh, we want it to be the very best that it can be because this may be the only source of nutrition that they get throughout a day. Come and see us uh, at the TRC, the Tiger Rally Cafe, and get ready. We're ready to feed tigers. Are you ready to come? Now it's time to sit back and slide into some soulful jazz. It's not so much as each individual tries to contribute as much as they can, it's more like we try to contribute as a group because there are times when we have to perform, or not perform, but like practice without one of our members and it just kind of feels hollow, our pieces, and it feels really awkward without all four of us there. So even if some of us are kind of having a bad day or if some of us are just kind of not into it, it still feels better than when they're just straight up not there. It makes it, it makes it go a lot smoother because we know exactly what's going wrong instead of just someone not being there and we don't know if it's their part. Um, it's very different. Um, the, the feeling is, uh, it, it, it shifts between trying to blend with obviously an entire band, an ensemble of like 50 or, or 20 people, between just four people. Like you can sit there and stand it and just look at each other as you do everything. Like imagine, imagine sending a band of 50 people trying to stare across like, you know, 20, 30 heads just so that you can see what the other person on the other side of the room is doing. But for a quartet, it is so compact um, and it is so personalized because everyone is right there. You can see each other and, and a big part of playing in a quartet is, um, is communication through body language. And so um, you, you're moving, like you, you hardly ever see a chamber um, ensemble that kind of just sits there and stares at the music. Because I mean, that's what, that's what big ensembles do, that's what orchestras do. But um, for quartets, especially trombone quartets, it's a lot of emotion and it's a lot of, it's a lot of physical interaction. Um, I don't wake up in the morning, so we don't practice in the mornings, even though we're supposed to. Um, and then also there's just not a whole lot of time that we have given how uh, three of us are working now and our schedules are really interfering with each other so we just don't have a lot of time to practice but you know we're making as much work as we can. The thing that I feel like few people understand about trombone is it's the only instrument in the band that can do certain things. For example, having a slide and understanding slide technique is just so different physically from every other instrument in the band that uses keys or valves or whatever else that you see. Um, so I've always felt very much that, especially as someone who was taught early on by a trombone player, 
um, that having experience playing the trombone is invaluable for teaching other trombone players because there's just so many niche things that go into playing trombone that you wouldn't necessarily pick up in just uh, a, a normal music education playing another instrument. Um, so I've always felt that it takes one to know one, sort of, as a trombone player. Uh, we've competed in the first uh, state chamber competition, and uh, there were uh, 16 that were invited, and we got 13th. And um, we have we are not doing any more competitions this year, but we are planning on um, continuing the quartet into college and competing in more chambered things uh, in the future. Friendship by SD. Seek perfection, capture excellence. Let's check out this park. <laughs> oh, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> to find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Hello. Hi. I'm from Blue Hood Stone Barns. We brought a meal for you and I'm here to serve it to you. Okay, great. Come in. Zucchini carbonara, made from zucchini that was harvested earlier this morning. Again? Oh. <laughs> hey, Dan Barber. You have room for a little bit more? <laughs> come yeah, on come in. Come on in. Brochettes with sausage. So when we made that zucchini carbonara, you know, they're the end pieces of the zucchini and then the cores that we cut away, not to mention zucchini flour. Usually those get thrown out. We use them to create an entire second dish. Does that, oh. Again? <laughs> I'm here to bring you your third course. It's the vines from your zucchini. We'll have a little zucchini stem pasta. A different experience of zucchini. When we start to think differently about our food, we can get a lot more out of it. This is delicious. What do you think we can make out of this? 40% of food in America is never eaten. Cook it, store it, share it. Visit savethefood.com. Now we would like to introduce a special lady who is truly a keeper of memories. I've been in 27 years. My first year I um, stumbled into a job six weeks into the school year. I ended up doing middle school theater. I had biology, which is not my field at all. I had also a health class, which was not my field, and this was all in middle school. I just needed a job. And so they put me in to do that. So that was an exciting first year. I was pregnant, newly married. It was crazy. Um, and then I just went on to do a bunch of AP and upper level Englishes and then got here, which was only my third school ever in 2001, and did English for a while and then changed over. 2007, I was getting really um, kind of tired of English, wanted a new challenge, because I was teaching English for a long time, so I wanted a new challenge. So I asked Spicer if there was something else I could do in the building, 
And she said, well, the yearbook lady's getting really tired of doing yearbook, do y'all wanna switch? And so we switched. So I got the professional, I got the speech communications class, and then I also got the yearbook class. And I just kind of stumbled into it like that, as a new challenge. I love that I get to know all the stuff. Um, it is challenging though to get to know all the stuff. Um, every year I plead, if you're doing something cool, take a picture and send it. Every year I plead if you're, but it's so fun when it actually happens. Almost always science is lighting something on fire. And that's very cool. But then you turn right around and, and the ag department is welding out there. I mean, it's just, it's phenomenal all the things that are going on in the building and we don't even know. Um, and so we try, have tried really, really hard so that we get to share all of that too. It's more than, it's more than just sports happening in this building. And that's cool that we get to kind of show everybody that. I think when you are working in an environment like that, where it's not just your class and you're the teacher and that kind of stuff, when you're working closely with kids, it develops into more of you know what's going on in their world and they trust you with that. So then that becomes a trust issue that you have to get through and honor, right? Because they're giving, they're letting you in and you have to honor that. And so that makes, it makes me proud that maybe I did more than just teach them how to design a book. Or maybe I taught them, you know, hey, you don't have to, you don't have to let, you don't have to let people treat you like that. There are ways that you can work out of that or you know maybe you handled that a little wrong or how about we fix this or I mean it just it gives you an outlet other than I'm your teacher and sometimes that can be very rewarding when you know that years later they are going to remember what happened in your room and who you were it's kind of humbling a little bit it's kind of humbling because you you strive to get it right because it is kind of a record book. It's not like a technology that's gonna go away and you can't open it again. So it's a little bit humbling to know that that responsibility kind of sits on you. Thanks for joining us today. If you know of a great story about Friendship ISD, let us know. Share your story ideas by calling or emailing. Also, be sure to follow Friendship ISD on Facebook and Twitter. We will see you on the next edition of Inside Friendship. Emergency plan today. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. <laughs>